and uh, we are here uh, live this this afternoon. Usually, I'll be coming to you with Bible study, but I want to share for a few things with you today. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to share. Um, uh, uh, you all uh, share with you all just a little bit of uh, uh, what I believe God is um, having us to uh, is speaking to us on. Actually, God is speaking to the church right now. Uh, we just came through large tornadoes. We we have uh, some unusual weather. Um, uh, tornadoes came th through the area on last night. Uh, today is the day after Easter that I'm speaking to you on. And uh, a lot of us are in um, order from the state and the federal government to be still because of the um, because of the coronavirus. And um, I want to share a few things with you. I've been ministering and teaching. The Lord instructed us several years ago to get online. And uh and and I was wondering why, but actually he basically told us to turn uh, our uh, attention to online. And of course, we were obedient and, and did it. And because of it, um, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable by getting online. But one of the things I, I did want to share with you all was that, um, and we know this is a brand new uh, area, new world that we're living in and, and nothing is going to be the same. It's not going to be the same as, as it, what it was in, in the old. So the bottom line is, is that we are in a brand new chapter of our spiritual life with Christ. Um, God dealt with his children in the Old Testament. You see where God's dealing with the children of Israel and how he brought them from out of Egypt land, out of out of all of the negative, the things that were uh, that that some of the things that we even see where we fight now, God brought them from the negative over into a land of promise. God's desire is to enjoy Himself with us, but another desire that He has is right now is to enjoy Himself with the blood washed children of God. In order for us to do that, we have to allow God to enjoy us. And for God to enjoy us, then we need to do things God's way. And how does God enjoy his people? Well, one of the greatest things that you can do to please God is to believe God. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's, that's without faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that must mean what actually pleases the heart of God is that we have faith. Faith in what? Faith in what God said is simple. The more that you believe the word of God, the more you believe God. And the more that you stick with the word of God, the greater your relationship is with God. It pleases God for us to have faith. We, we look at Jesus' life. You don't hear a whole lot. There's not a lot of script about Jesus' life before he was 30 years old. One time, he got away, got into the temple, and was talking with the elders in the temple and was astonishing to them because he knew that word. It, 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 that was to show us that Jesus studied himself in the word of God under the old covenant. You see prophecies about the coming Messiah in the Old Testament. Isaiah talks about it. There's a lot of different uh, prophecies in the Old Testament. 
about, it's actually about Jesus. And Jesus studied it. He studied it. And so he demonstrated his knowledge and wisdom in the word at the age 12. But that was not his time for ministry. And so his mother came looking for him and uh, and he said he was about his father's business. And and she said, come on, Jesus, let's go. <laughs> Pretty well took him back home. You didn't hear anything else about him until he was 30 years old. At the age 30, when he got ready uh, after uh, after the prophesied move of John, John was prophesied to get here. And after John preceded Jesus, after John gets here, it was time for John now to take Jesus through the water. Now, if you know that if you if you look at it, you look at at the Old Testament all the way through. You're going to see uh, Old Testament all the way through, uh, and in that Old Testament, you're going to see where, where where God's people will cross over from physical earth into God's earth or physical things of God. In other words, you see them, the crossing of the water. And the crossing of the water was the symbol of them getting over into the things of God. You see them come out of Egypt, headed to the promised land. And as they come out of Egypt, headed to promised land, they go first through the water. And Jesus, uh, I mean, and 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 uh, Moses pulls them through the water, and then um, the uh, you remember Pharaoh's army uh, that tried to come across. They couldn't come across. They were evil, so they couldn't come across to the other side. And there was another crossing. Um, you see it in Joshua the fourth chapter where they, where they were coming across again, and you see uh, in all of those different times. You see in all of those different times where people where people were coming across the water. And uh, and as we are here on Facebook Live, I just want to share with you all how important for us or you to understand uh, what I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, uh, that that Jesus actually goes into ministry when he crosses. The water now now. John was the person who brings them across the water. What he did or does is he take them down in the water and bring them back up. And uh, and I really wasn't going to get onto that, but but uh, about the water situation. But that's a study within itself. How when you give your life to Christ, it's important for you to go down in the water and to come back up as a symbol of what you have done. You have crossed over from the physical life into the spiritual life. And every time uh, you see that Moses, the children of Israel, coming out from one place to the other, they're listening to God, they cross the water. Uh, Joshua, when they finally fixing to go into the promised land and God circumcised all of the men and he tells them to go cross the water when the feet of the priests, the Bible says, hit that water, that water stood up and uh, it, it stood up for them. It obeyed them and it went all the way across and um, and they went went across that water and they were at that time getting ready to to sing their way into um, it, it <laughs> into Jericho. They, they were fixing to praise their way into Jericho seven days walking around. And on the seventh day, they walked around seven times and he told them, don't say nothing. Don't speak out of your mouth. Just shout. And they shouted, but before they shouted, God put, um, he put the, um, you notice he put the praise, the praise, the, the, the horn blowers, music players to put them up front. That's important. Never despise those people that praise God in your churches. Uh, that's why the devil don't like people that deal with the music. You always find problems in the music because the enemy is scared. Because once you start praising God, once you start, well, that's another thing as well. Jesus goes to John and says, baptize me. 
John said, oh, no, I'm not worthy to baptize. He said, if you, if you don't baptize me, then he goes back to the scripture. He says, he, he, he lets John know, then you're going to be uh, outside of the scriptures if you don't baptize me. That's basically what you're going to find, find out what happened. God the Father was waiting on that obedience. And so Jesus goes through the water. And he gets baptized and he comes back out to water. And if you read it, you're going to find out that Jesus does one thing. He says, I mean, the father, he says, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son. In whom I. I'm well pleased. God was waiting to say this about his son. Why? Because now he's demonstrating the faith in God. This is powerful. Now he's demonstrating. He's demonstrating. See, we can holler, I got faith. I got faith. And then when somebody says something about healing, well, I ain't got that. I just, I will, and everybody, but everybody, I got faith. No, no, no. Jesus went to the cross. Your faith should be simply pointed back to what Jesus did on your behalf. Listen to this. Let me tell you how simple it is. Gave you a name. He, Jesus told, told him in, John, the third chapter, six, 16 verse. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth upon him should, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then John says, <laughs> here's the question. You're talking about being born again. And so the question again says, here's where the question comes up. He says, uh, should I go back into my mother's womb and be born again? That's, I mean, see, that's the physical. See, he needed, he needed to go on the other side of the water. And Jesus says, no, you need to be born of the, of the uh, spirit and of the water. You see, what he was saying to be born again, you need to come across this water. You need to be born of the spirit, and and then you need to be born of the water. Here, here, here's, here's, here, here's what he's saying. He's because flesh is flesh, but the spirit is spirit. So to be born again, that's what we're doing. We are being born into a new kingdom where Christ is the king. So if Christ is the king, you be born, you've been born into a place brand new. And then he gave you a name that is above all names. That at that name, every knee shall bow. Let's talk about the coronavirus. Now, Jesus, we know, is the king, and he took care of all of those things. You know, you know by the character of Jesus that if he walked up on a situation, that situation is going to straighten out. Okay. If 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 there was sickness, there was disease, or something that was out of line, Jesus would have taken care of it. He came as a man that had to get the spirit just like you had to get the spirit. He 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 blessed God with the fact that he went through everything that man had to go through. The Bible said, yet without sin, he never turned himself away from God, from the Father. He did it, but he was a sample. He was a sample man. So if Jesus did it, if Jesus was the sample man, and he did it on our behalf. He did it to show us that if I could do it, you could do it. 
Well, that was Jesus. Jesus, okay. When Jesus was baptized, what happened to him? What, what happened? The Bible said, and the spirit of God came down upon him like as a dove. All right, stop there. What happened when the church got born, when the church started in Acts, the second, third, when you read about the act in Acts, where the church, what happened? The spirit came down on those men and women in that upper room. The spirit came down, blew it, came like a wind, like a mighty rushing wind and set up on all of them. What was the difference? Jesus says to all of those people that were looking, I mean, Peter says that all, to all of those people that were looking, y'all looking at these folks like it's something strange. The same Jesus that y'all sent to the grave got up out the grave is what he was saying. He got up out the grave on behalf of all of these people. And now he says, and he said that didn't he say that he was going to put his spirit, that's the spirit that went into Jesus, among all flesh. And listen to what he says. And your sons, this is in Acts, and your daughters shall Prophesy. You got to be bad enough to say what God says, because the only prophesying that you're going to do is what God said that he's going to do. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. But dreams and visions were given so that you could see it and say it. I see what you're saying. Have you ever said that? It's because I see it. I'm going back to coronavirus. Can you see us coming out of this? If Jesus then, let me go back to this. If Jesus walked up on a situation, spirit in the Holy Spirit in his body. Jesus walks up on a situation and is out of whack. And they are asking Jesus, Jesus, will you help put us back together? That's what, that's what he did on, uh, at, at the uh, Pool of Bethesda. Jesus didn't go and heal everybody. It was the one who looked and asked for it. Your heart got to want it. All right? But if Jesus walked up on a situation, he wouldn't just let it be. He walked up on a tree, and the tree was talking to him and says, I ain't giving you nothing. But Jesus said, you ain't going to live from this day forward. Mark 11, chapter 20, verse. He says, from this day forward, but you ain't you ain't you ain't gonna live. Well, actually, that's not twenty verse, but he said, from this day forward, but you're not gonna live. They come back and they are astonished around the twenty verse, and then they say, Jesus, see this tree. Jesus said, well, here's let me let me give you the lesson from this. He said, you can speak to a mountain. Let's go back to speaking. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. That's speaking. They're speaking things that's coming out of your spirit and not out of your eyes. That means that you can see past what is out there and you can see what God's saying about it. So I see what you're saying. I see what you are saying, God, about it. Not I see what this thing is doing and which way it's going to take me. See, because you could see something. And say that this thing is going to take us to our death. Or you can see the healing power of God and says, this thing is going to be our best blessing. It's going to make us stronger and we're going to come out and this thing is going to die quicker than we've ever seen it before. You can decide that. Not based on what somebody else said, but based on the word of God. 
All right, so what do I base all of this on? If I go to Psalms 91, Psalms 91 says to me, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God. Well, that's me. I hang out with God. If he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I, I, I can abide under the shadow of the almighty. Yes, you can. And here's the thing that's going to happen. It's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to come. I'm, 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 I'm paraphrasing. A lot of stuff that will shoot at you. People going to talk about you, but it will not touch you. Because you are mine. And I will take care of you. I will protect you. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I made you an heir. And I made you a joint heir with Christ. And you have been placed in heavenly places with Christ. I am the head. I'm not the tail. If when I start seeing what the word of God says to me, then I could say, I see what you saying, God, the father who's speaking to me. So God is saying, if my people, which are called by my name, Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Would humble themselves, stop running everything, and pray. That means say and seek my face because you got to say what's coming out of my face. So, what's coming out of my face is what's coming out of my mouth. And what's coming out of my mouth is my blessing for you. And if you can speak my blessing for you over on top of everything else, well, I'm, I'm just so scared. God did not give you the spirit of fear. Get it out of there. So you can't talk fear. Spirit of love. And what comes after the love? Power. And don't you want a sound mind with love, power, and a sound mind? This is what God wants the church to do. If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, say, declare, speak. Old men dream dreams. Young men see visions. In those days, I pour out my spirit among all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. You prophesy, you pray, you declare, and you are doing the will of God without faith. Is as impossible to please God. So what pleases God is a man and a woman of God that is standing up in the midst of any situation and saying whatever God wants you to say. Romans, the eighth chapter, says that the earth is waiting. The earth is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. It's waiting. It's groaning. Where are the sons of God? God said when Jesus was coming out that water, finally, 30 years into his life, this is my beloved son, 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 in whom I am well pleased. Children of God is one word. Uh, I believe that's technon. And sons of God is weos. God is looking for sons of God. Children is one thing. The Bible says in Ephesians, don't be like children tossed to and fro. You can be born again, but born again children, the Bible says in Hebrews, a babies like that desire milk, still needing to be fed the milk you, because you can't stand meat. 
Sons eat that word. I don't care what it sounds like. If it comes from God, I'm saying it. Give me my steak. And I want a polter house. <laughs> I want a polter house. I want it thick. And I can eat it. That's a son of God. A son of God in the midst of situations, coronavirus, and the, and the people coming on the news and saying, it's getting closer and closer to where you live. Folks will Facebook you. Did you notice that your cousin got coronavirus and Johnny Lee died? Hey, you going to die. All of us going to die. The enemy comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. That's the devil. Jesus says, I come that ye might have life, and that more abundantly. You want to have life? You want to have abundant life? You want to walk in love, power? You want to have a sound mind? Hold on to the word of God that has been spoken to you. Hold on to what God has said. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sin, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law or the word of God, and in his law or word does he meditate therein day and night. And in his meditation, meditating in day and night, he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. He will produce the fruit in the right season. And whatever he does will prosper. David the psalmist said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and we are now getting familiar with the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For God is with me. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. This, this is Old Testament. Now, now the veil has been torn and you don't even have to post blood on the doorposts because now the blood has been spilled with your name on it. And there's no blood that has to be spilled anymore because Jesus has done it and he has filled us. Glory to God with his spirit. The healing power of God. I declare it up on you right now. The love of God, I declare it up on you right now. You are not by yourself. God is with you right now. If you believe the words that I say, can you believe the words that I'm speaking from my mouth? Where is the sons of God? Where are the sons of God? Where are they talking? Are they saying something? I want to hang out with the sons of God. Who would declare the word of God in the midst of this? Who are not scared? Who are not fearful? We should have been ready for anything that comes, even when situations. I thank God for the ones yesterday. When the tornado came, I got a text. We praying when the tornado, before the tornado made it, we've been declaring against this weather. That it will not come near us. See, that's what I'm talking about, a son manifesting. Somebody saying that I'm praying against this weather. Instead of saying, well, I need to lay down and some watch and see what God is going to do. Stop talking about God. God is not in that weather. God is not the weather. Well, child, my grandmama told me to sit down and 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 we better sit down. We we better 
We better, we better sit down and let God do his work. Stop saying what the insurance, the insurance company is saying. It is not an act of God. Why would God be your savior and then come and kill you? That's the difference between Old Testament and New Testament people who've been who've been taught, born again through the new covenant, but then go back and teach themselves that they living in the old. You're not living in the old covenant. If you are, then why didn't nobody stone you in your sin? God is not that. In the old covenant, God has delivered you. And through all of the old, all the way up to this point, God fixed it so that Jesus could die on your behalf so that you won't have to go through all of that. Don't put yourself back. The Bible says you're not worthy of the kingdom if you keep looking back. Once you put your hand to the plow, keep on going. Stop looking back. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Y'all still love me? <laughs> I am uh I'm thankful for all of you all that 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 uh that that came on with us today. I want to share that with you and I'm going to share a little bit uh later on today uh a little bit of a, a message that I preached. And uh, but I'm not going to share it on this one. I, I decided not to do that. But uh I do want to share with you all that we are in a different time and I do have some regular listeners and uh, I want you to grow, uh, grow as well. And so I, I want those of you that that uh, that feel like that that God is leading you uh, at this point, we do have a cash out uh, where we can give you um, uh, the coordinates to go and give on cash out. And also, uh, I'm going to put up here uh, our website as well, and you can go on our website. And on our website, that you could you could go on and uh, and go to the uh, online giving, and you can actually set up a, an account on our online giving, and it would allow you to give a specific amount. And if you all looked at our uh, 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 Pastor Anthony Pitts, that was a that, that man of God came in here on Easter Sunday, had a word. I'm going to bring him back because what he was saying as far as giving was concerned is so important. A lot of people in the church don't understand giving. And what he was saying about giving, there's a spiritual side too, and that there's a coming through the water that we need to come through on our giving. And and it is it is it is so possible for you to say, Jesus, I want you to be Lord over my life, but you can keep him away from certain aspects of it. And if giving is kept away, then you can miss out on the move of God for your life and the great intent that he has, because a lot of things up on this earth is going to be hooked up to, the, to whether you have enough money to do what God told you to do. And if he can't get you into the supernatural move of God through the giving, then there are certain things that he can't get you to do because you you won't allow him to have your finances. So God wants you to actually to be able when you reach down in your pockets, you believe in God so much so that your finance belongs to God that, you know, you reach it in God's pocket and not yours. If you are selfish enough or if you had gotten to be selfish to the point that you're not given, then you miss out. And the Bible says, if you quench, it says, quench not the Holy Spirit of God. So if God can't talk to you about your finances, then you still Lord over. So the way he breaks that is that he'll tell you how much to give. So he trains us with the training wheels of tithing. But then beyond tithing, which is 10%, beyond tithing, if we can do the training with, so the, the point is, is that then your giving is in obedience to God. So I'm obeying God with the 10%. 
if then you are, whatever you're giving is something that's spoken out the kingdom of God, then now you got the kingdom of God involved with your finances. So if God tells you to 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 bless uh, or plant a seed for this amount of money and you do it, then you didn't do it on your own. You did it because God said it. Then he's obligated to give you the blessing. Press down, shaking together and running over. He's obligated to give you that blessing. That's the way it works. If you hear from God, you do what he says, then you're planting on this earth what God told you to plant. Then God is obligated to bring the harvest. He's obligated. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But when he said that, he was talking to Peter, who had just gotten a revelation from the kingdom of God. He said, what you just said is not something that somebody gave you or told you. This is something that you got as a revelation from the kingdom of God. And he says that the gates of hell should not prevail against the church who has a revelation like that. All right. So in, in the deal in, in giving, if you've been obedient, not to me, if you've been obedient to God in your giving and, and you search God, God, what is it that you want me to give? And then you give it. Then God is obligated to bless you. God bless you. All of y'all that came and I see that uh, many of y'all come. Oh, Charles, Thomas, you still there? My brother, the man that lived between midnight and daybreak is listening. <laughs> oh, my God. God bless you. Uh, for, for all of you all, I see my daughter-in-law is on and she's uh, getting ready to have that beautiful baby, that grandbaby of mine. It's my grandbaby. And all my kin folks are on. I want y'all, Vernice Brandon. God bless you, Vernice. What you say? You said for the people in Mount Bay, please listen to this man. Amen. You you you're right. But this word is it's for 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 it's for Mount Bay, but it's for all of us. And Vernice, I, I appreciate you coming on as well. And uh, my cousin Don. Uh, and and. Uh, Leontine uh, Cameron, she is my cousin. Tina, Marie Ryan, and Oscar Lawrence, all of y'all, we're so glad to have you all. And uh, I want y'all to share this. If y'all would, please share this uh, on your Facebook page as well. So God bless you, uh, each and every one of you all, and we will see you. Hey, that, uh, that go Pastor Pitts. Pastor Pitts just showed up. He said, go, Pastor, go. Pastor Pitts, I just talked to them about that about that uh, that seed seed offering. Lord have mercy, and uh, uh, I, I might have to get you back on here, man, and, and and talk a little bit more. I did promise them that that you were gonna come back anyway, and talk a little bit more about it as well. So God bless you uh, as well. I'm, we fixing to get off, but but I'm telling y'all, we fixing that. We fixing to come into one of the most powerful this time. Now, now, now let me just say this: I'm going. On. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. The Lord spoke to us a while back and told us when this thing comes, when this, when this, he, he, he prepared us for this, 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 this pandemic, this problem. And he said, when this thing comes, the church needs to be available and ready. Now, uh, I, I can only assess myself. I can only assess me. And uh, and do what what I believe God is telling me to do, and and so uh, I don't think that I was as ready as I should have been, or I could have been. But I'm not in, in any guilt about it because you know I do know that God um, uh, has plenty of mercy and plenty of grace. And uh, but I wish that I, in hindsight, that I could have been ob obedient e immediately. Uh, uh, quicker than I was, 
because when God tells you something, uh, just like uh, the preacher told me, he said, when the window of opportunity opens, it only opens to a, a certain point enough for you to get through it. He said, because as soon as it opens, it starts coming back down. And he warned me, don't get to the point that you can't get through that window. So we want to be children and men and women of God that we want to hear God. But if you have not got your finances turned over to God in the kingdom of God and had not put your finances within the kingdom. By hearing God and then doing what God say, by listening to God and doing what God say and knowing that what you plant is what you heard from God and you received it from God. If you have not, this is a good time to start because that's where you want to be. Amen. Father, I pray. I pray for those who are listening. I pray for all of the ones that are receiving that word. And as I pray, I declare in the name of Jesus that powerful things will happen. First of all, that they will see themselves in the secret place of the most high God knowing that they abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They are under the protection of the Lord. No weapon formed against them would prosper. And I declare in the name of Jesus that powerful things will happen in their lives. Powerful things. Great, wonderful, marvelous, powerful things will happen in their lives. Now, Father, I pray for those who are given that they get a word from God. And that each one, until they hear from God, won't give until they hear from God, until they hear, until they know that they're obeying God. Now, hearing from God could be tithing. That is from the Lord. But beyond the tithes, what you have said. And listening to God and believing what I plant is from the Lord places the obligation to God that he must bless you from the kingdom of God. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Father, I declare that the good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over will be shown to them, and they will be able to see that it was through their obedience that brought them the blessing. Father, thank you for that. We give you praises. We give you glory for what you're doing. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, and everybody across this place, this world, this country, said amen and amen, and God bless you today.